Democrats and Republicans are split on the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. Democrats overwhelmingly believe Christine Blasey Ford and Republicans overwhelmingly believe Brett Kavanaugh. Some people on the right are saying this is a political hit job meant to smear Brett Kavanaugh. Even Brett Kavanaugh alluded to that fact in his testimony. Many people on the left are saying this is a legitimate claim of sexual misconduct that needs to be taken seriously. Whatever you want to call it, it is backfiring horribly on the Democrats. A new poll released by NPR shows that whatever gap there was in enthusiasm for the midterms has all but evaporated. This gap was an advantage for the Democrats. The reason they gave? The Brett Kavanaugh hearings have roused the GOP. Many people feel that midterms are a reflection of the president and not local politics. And that means people are going to vote whether or not they like Trump. So if they like Trump, they'll vote Republican. If they don't, they'll vote Democrat. It has nothing really to do with what their senators and Congress people are actually advocating. But Trump has said that if the Republicans lose the House, he could be impeached. And this sentiment has been parroted by many people on the left and the right. So it's very important for the Democrats to actually win the House come November. New data from 538 shows that may be the case, that they've got a three to four chance of actually winning the House. So let's see what exactly happened and why NPR thinks the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation hearing was bad for the Democrats. But before we get started, head over to patreon.com slash timcast if you want to support my work. Patrons are the backbone of the videos I produce, and if you like these, and even the videos I make on my second channel, go to patreon.com slash timcast and become a patron at whatever level you feel comfortable today. From NPR, poll. Amid Kavanaugh confirmation battle, Democratic enthusiasm edge evaporates. Just over a month away from critical elections across the country, the wide Democratic enthusiasm advantage that has defined the 2018 campaign up to this point has disappeared, according to a new NPR PBS NewsHour Marist poll. In July, there was a 10-point gap between the number of Democrats and Republicans saying the November elections were very important. Now that is down to two points a statistical tie. In the graph, we can see that Democrats in July, 78% of them felt the midterms were important and only 68% of Republicans. But amid the confirmation hearing, we can see that it's almost even. What's really interesting is the difference between men and women. Among Democratic women, it's actually shifted with more men now feeling the midterms are important. And among the Republicans, more women have always felt the midterms will be very important. Interestingly, independents are pretty split and (laughs) haven't seemed to change. NPR goes on. Democrats' advantage on which party's candidate they are more likely to support has also been cut in half since last month. Democrats still retain a six-point edge on that question, but it was 12 points after a Marist poll conducted in mid-September. The results come amid the pitched and hotly partisan confirmation battle over Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court. Multiple women have accused Kavanaugh of sexual misconduct when he was in high school and college. He categorically denies all the allegations. The FBI is conducting a supplemental investigation into the accusations that is expected to be wrapped up by the end of this week. With Democrats already fired up for this election, the Kavanaugh confirmation fight has apparently had the effect of rousing a dormant GOP base. The result of the hearings, at least in the short run, is the Republican base was awakened, noted Lee Mirangoff, director of the Marist Institute for Public Opinion, which conducted the poll. While Democrats and Republicans are now equally enthusiastic about the midterms, the story is very different for key Democratic base groups and independents. While 82% of Democrats say the midterms are very important, that's true of just 60% of people under 30, 61% of Latinos, and 65% of independents. Democrats need to net 23 seats to take back control of the House, but if those groups stay home in large numbers, it would blunt potential Democratic gains. With 34 days to go until Election Day, it all points to another election dominated by party activists. Young people tend to be leading the charge in terms of activism. They're the ones we see out in the streets, but I find it particularly interesting that very few young people tend to vote, but they do tend to protest. You'd have to imagine there's kind of a gap here. Are the people who are going out with Antifa and in these big protests and chanting, are they actually voting? I believe that you do see young people who are more likely to vote who are protesting. However, of much of these protests, many of them are far left activists who don't believe voting matters and end up not voting anyway. So will their opinions, will the opinions of the activists and the protesters actually have an impact on the elections? That we'll have to wait to see. But we do have data from 538 suggesting the Democrats will take the House. According to 538's deluxe forecasting, we see that Democrats have a 72.8% chance of winning control of the House, and Republicans only have a 27.2% chance of keeping control of the House. And this 
is extremely important because last month, Trump suggested he will be impeached if Republicans lose Congress. According to The Independent, President Donald Trump on Thursday raised the prospects that he could face impeachment if Republicans lose control of Congress, imploring supporters at a campaign rally here to back GOP candidates in the midterm elections. He said, you aren't voting for a candidate, you're voting for which party controls Congress. It's a very important thing, Trump said. They like to use the impeach word, impeach Trump, but he hasn't done anything wrong. Doesn't matter. We will impeach him. Now, these polls were wrong in 2016. We don't know if the polls today are going to be correct. A lot of people have lost confidence in them. And whether or not this information will help or hurt either Republicans or Democrats, we don't know. Because it's an interesting phenomenon. When Democrats are told they're likely to win, many people don't go out and don't vote because they think they got it in the bag. But when they're told they're going to lose, Republicans will likely come out and say, we have to vote. We have to make sure we win. But there can be an inversion effect because people know that just because they're being told they're going to win doesn't mean they're going to win. So they might still go and vote anyway. We don't know if this information is going to have a big impact on what actually happens. And this is where things get really difficult. Because according to Axios, just a day before the NPR poll, they said the blue wave is growing. The signs of a blue wave are adding up and barring some dramatic shift in the next five weeks, it's likely to be more than enough to wipe out the Republican majority in the House and the Senate may not be out of reach either. Why it matters? Democrats only need 23 seats to win the House. They say more Democratic challengers have outraised Republican incumbents and candidates than ever before, including in at least 73 House races for open seats, which are traditionally easier to flip. More Democrats turned out in House primaries than Republicans this cycle, the first time that has happened since 2008. Democrats have had a double-digit lead over Republicans in the generic congressional ballot in the last month. Cook Political Report now rates 42 GOP-held seats as toss-up or worse. In 2010, there were 36 Democratic-held seats rated this way. Republicans are pulling TV ads for vulnerable GOP incumbents in places like Kansas, Pennsylvania, and Colorado. But they do point out that on the other side, there is an inverse to this. They mention that the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation fight, which Republicans think they can use to target red state Senate Democrats who might be damaged by their opposition to him. And Wall Street Journal just published this op-ed by Karl Rove, how Kavanaugh could help the GOP. If the FBI finds no further evidence, Republicans benefit in the midterms. He says the hearing eroded support for Judge Kavanaugh's Supreme Court confirmation, according to a September 30 Harvard Harris poll. Before the hearing, 36% of voters favored his confirmation with 38 opposed and 26% undecided. After the hearing, support for confirmation was roughly unchanged, but opposition ticked up to 44% as the share of undecideds fell. Responses broke along partisan lines. Republicans favored confirmation 72 to 13, while Democrats opposed it 71 to 16. Independents also opposed confirmation 45 to 28. But the tide of opinion could reverse after the Federal Bureau of Investigation finishes its supplemental background check. The Harvard-Harris survey also asked respondents where they would stand if the FBI review finds no corroboration of Ms. Ford's accusation. In that case, support for confirming Judge Kavanaugh rises to 60%, including 58% among independents, while opposition drops to 40%. This is why Democrats who demanded an FBI investigation are likely to disparage it once it concludes. They will argue it was rushed, even though Senator Amy Klobuchar initially said, let's give this one week. And Senator Maisie Hirano said over the weekend, there is time to get to the bottom of it, even if it's seven days. In a September 20 letter to the White House, Democratic senators noted that the FBI finished its work in three days when investigating accusations against Clarence Thomas in 1991. He goes on, Democrats aren't the only ones revved up by all this. The Harvard-Harris poll found 46% of Republicans, along with 50% of Democrats, agreed. The battle over Brett Kavanaugh made them more likely to turn out and vote in this November's midterm elections. Republicans have generally been less enthusiastic than Democrats, but they may have been jolted into action by the controversy. People keep talking about the coming blue wave. As we saw, there's evidence to suggest that it might actually happen because Democrats have outraised Republicans. And according to 538, they are favored overwhelmingly to win the House. So it is entirely possible based on forecasting predictions and fundraising, we're going to see the Democrats take the House. And don't forget, Trump said he could be impeached if that's the case. However, we are seeing new polls showing that Republicans are being revved up over what is happening to Brett Kavanaugh. And this may be bad news for the Democrats. Yes, 
they have raised more money than Republicans throughout this campaign season because Republicans weren't as enthusiastic. But following the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation hearings, more Republicans are becoming more enthusiastic. So even if the Democrats did outraise Republicans and they were facing this potential blue wave, Republicans have now stepped up and might actually match the Democrats. I'm not one for predictions. I'm not a big fan of these polls, especially from 538, because they were really, really wrong on election day. In fact, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong about this, but just to throw back to 2016, I'm pretty sure that 538 was one of the last to start changing their polls in favor of Donald Trump when he was winning. I think the New York Times was the first to show Trump having the likelihood of winning as the results were coming in. 538 lagged behind. So we can claim that 538 is right. We can say that the fundraising shows no matter what happens, Democrats are going to win because traditionally those who out fundraise their opponents end up winning. But if Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation hearing did actually rouse the GOP, then that fundraising might not actually matter. All that matters is that come election day, people vote. And if Republicans feel it's very important to vote, then they didn't need the commercials to convince them to do it anyway. The fundraising is going to buy volunteer work. It's going to pay for campaign work. It's going to pay for ads that help those Democratic candidates. But if the confirmation hearing served as an advertisement for the GOP anyway, then the Democrats are now going to be facing an uphill battle. Whatever your opinion on the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation hearing, it would seem that as of right now, it has been nothing but bad for the Democrats because as I've gone into great detail, it has roused the GOP. But now we're hearing. White House says there is no evidence against Kavanaugh in FBI report. Senators are set to review the FBI findings Thursday, and this is from Market Watch. Obviously, the White House is going to be defending Brett Kavanaugh. It's Trump's nominee. So we'll have to wait and see what the senators and the Judiciary Committee actually says. But if this assessment is correct, it can only be really, really bad for the Democrats because they've already roused GOP voters. But if it comes back that the FBI investigation they wanted shows no corroboration, then many people might feel the Democrats wasted their time. And this is more likely among independents and moderates because obviously among tribal lines, nothing will change anyone's minds. So let me know what you think in the comments below. According to NPR, the Kavanaugh hearings have benefited the GOP. And we have that Wall Street Journal op-ed saying just that much, but according to 538, that isn't the case and it doesn't really matter. They think the House will still go to the Democrats come November. So again, comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. You can follow me on Twitter at TimCast. Stay tuned, new videos every day at 4 p.m. and more videos coming up on my second channel, youtube.com slash TimCastNews, starting at 6 p.m. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all next time.